Body Electric, what is it? Oh, wait till you hear this summit. Okay, this doctor worked directly with the mad scientist himself, Dr. Klinghart. I was interviewed for her summit on Body Electric and I was so fascinated. This has been one of my fascinations this year, this thing about energy in the body. I know, woo woo, okay? I thought so too. I've changed my thinking just by hearing story after story about how people's lives change based on this science that you're going to hear in this show. During the summit, she interviews the best in the world. And during this, uh, this interview, she talks about what she learned and all the things. And this is stuff you can start right now. And uh, it's going to be awesome for you to hear this. And this is something you need to incorporate in your life. This science may not have been so important 20 years ago, 50 years ago. But man, is this information life-changing now. Stay tuned. Welcome to Cellular Healing TV. I'm Ashley Smith, and today we welcome Dr. Christine Schaffner, who is a board-certified naturopathic physician. Dr. Christine is here today to discuss the biofield and how our bodies communicate with energy and frequency, what tools and therapeutics can be implemented, uh, including grounding, one of my favorites. And she'll also talk a bit about the amazing summit she put together called Body Electric, which Dr. Pompa, you are a speaker on. So I cannot wait to watch that. I will link everything in our show notes. So let's get started and welcome Dr. Christine Schaffner and Dr. Pompa to the show. Welcome. Thank you, Ashley. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, I, I'm excited. I, yeah, I was on the summit of Body Electric, and uh, I was very excited to introduce you to our viewers and listeners. Be this topic, you know, I have to start here. You know, it's so woo-woo when we talk about energy and Body Electric that I, d I oftentimes, you know, get the response back from people or the feeling that, you know, it's okay, yeah, that's you know, that's important, but they really don't believe how important, or, you know, mm -hmm. because they think it's just woo-woo or they just throw it out, or even if they do believe it, they don't really believe how important it is. I'm going to say, you know, the last year, I've really dug deeper in the science around this topic, and I've come out a greater, a stronger believer that, especially today, this is a game changer in people's health. I mean, obviously, you know, EMF, these energy exposures, dirty electricity. I've done a lot of things on Facebook about it. And, you know, and it takes this with me, Christine. It takes me getting very sick people, which I help, right? I coach very, very sick and challenged people. And it takes stories like, you know, I, we got rid of the Wi-Fi or the smart meter and this and that, and now I'm sleeping through the night. Mm -hmm. it, it, and then that makes me dig deeper, and it also makes me a believer. So I'm a believer. I hope that you can bring the science here. You know, the, I could, you know, talk about everything, all the discoveries that I've learned here, but, you know, you're going to make it simple. I know you are. This summit, I'm excited for this summit because you're, you've interviewed and you can talk about some of them, the experts, you know, in the world around this topic. And I can tell you, this is not woo-woo. This is real science. But first of all, body electric, what is that? Mm -hmm. And you know, how does this make us sick? And how can it make us well? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being part of the summit. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's just, you know, the time is right, you know, to bring this information. I think, as you mentioned, there's so much information now and awareness around Wi-Fi and 5G and cell phones. And, you know, I think we need to bring us back to the conceptual framework of how our bodies communicate with um, energy, frequency and vibration to really understand how these tools and technologies impact our health and our well-being. And, um, you know, the body electric. So I, I had, it's funny, I, I came up with this idea for um, the summit in a yoga class. I do yoga regularly to try to clear my mind and, you know, connect and you know, that came to me and really it was, you know, what came, the word that came to me was around biophysics. So I work with Dr. Klinghardt at um, Sophia Health Institute in Seattle. And, you know, he has always, you know, he's taught me a ton about biochemistry, of course. Um, and I, I think we're really great at biochemistry. I know that you do a lot of great work with detoxification and we're looking about, you know, all the biochemical, you know, things that need to happen or get blocked when people are sick. But, you know, one of his reflections was, you know, when people really recover from a 
chronic illness is that we inter, um, integrate not only biochemical tools, but also tools that really um, heal the body using biophysics. And so we interact with a lot of those technologies and tools at Sophia a lot, and I have a trust in them and a belief in them and um, you know patients have taught me that these are really important but like you um, you know you go through these phases when you're practicing medicine and there was just a strong desire for my my brain and my mind to um, learn Learn more as, as I'm sharing this information to our audiences and our yeah. community. And so, you know, one of the things I always like to say, Dr. Pompa, when people are starting to, okay, what do we mean by body electric is that we know that our heart, right, has a strong electromagnetic field um, that is measurable in conventional medicine. We know EKGs measure that all the time. There is a language for that. We also know that we have brain waves that can be measured with EEG. So we have in conventional medicine that's not blue at all, we have tools and technologies that are picking up this electromagnetic nature of our bodies. And so I want to take this a step deeper with our discussions around um, concepts of what we call the biofield. I think the biofield is a wonderful term. Dr. Rubik, who's on the um, summit. She's one of these frontier scientists, and she studied biophysics in Berkeley. And you know, she has um, she brought the term biofield into PubMed in the 1990s, and this whole language for NIH to study biofield sciences. So this whole um, idea that we have this electromagnetic energy that's emitted from the body, and it's a language to also maybe conceptualize ancient traditions, um, discussions around chi and prana and meridians and all of that. But the one concept that I, I, I know that we're going to get into is, you know, kind of changes. There was a theme with a lot of the speakers and that it's not just this kind of um, afterthought or this random field that's generated from our physical organs, but that field of information actually is intelligent and organizes and instructs and regulates our physical body. So really when we're recovering our health, you know, this has to be part of the conversation. And I think we're, we're doing that in the alternative medicine probably world more than we realize, you know, with the tools that we're in therapies that we're all drawn to. But I, I just really, you know, when you see the patients we both see, we want them not to just feel better, but really recover on a deep, profound level so they get their life back and they don't have to, um, you know, just be in constant fear about, um, you know, their health declining again. That's awesome. You know, I mean, I, I, I can't wait for it because like I said, I mean, this has been a focus of mine for the last year. And, and, and again, just, you know, hearing from people, um, you know, okay, they get rid of this in their life and they get better. But, you know, I've, I've taken that step to, hey, add this to your life. And we see, you know, I mean, I think the first um, introduction uh, I had to near infrared, this was, you know, years ago, but it was one of my autoimmune clients that uh, had severe psoriasis started mm -hmm. doing some uh, near light with Juve and transformed her and her cellular energy. You know? mm -hmm. um, and then pulsed electromagnetic fields. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm going to be doing an interview with uh, pulse and you know, mm -hmm. I have a unit. I use it every day just mm -hmm. because I, it just puts me in this parasympathetic zone where I just fall asleep and I feel amazing and I, I test everything my heart rate variability changed in my wife's dramatically by using this it's pulsed electromagnetic fields so these fields can affect us for you know crushing our health mm -hmm. and our immune system and we can use these energies to uh, help us okay you've interviewed uh, most of the experts give us some takeaways mm -hmm. you know give us some takeaways on both sides like some you know things that these uh, energies that we need to get rid of yeah. in the things that you have found yeah. in these experts have found that are the game changers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was um, so, you know, blessed to have um, talked to so many wonderful experts and there's definitely the common theme, how I shared that, you know, in order to create health and to get rid of disease, we have to create more what we call coherence in the biofield. And what that can mean just for a very simplistic and not getting into physics, just how do we create the flow? How do we remove blockages Right. And create more flow um, right. in our energy field. And so um, there's lots of tools that we can talk about. So that, but that's a theme that I want you to think about when you're thinking about these concepts and the, the things in the stressors that we need to get away from. I do have a number of experts who talk about EMF. So, you know, with the um, upcoming um, 5G implementation and how that's going to affect your bodies and how can we really um, create a self um, or a safe, rather, sleeping location. I think that's one of the most important Huge. things. 
to reduce our EMF exposure because, you know, it's going to probably get worse before it gets better, but how can we feel empowered and start with your sleeping location? So measure it, know what you're up against, turn off your Wi-Fi, even turning off the electricity. We have people do that at night. If you need to take um, it a step further, you can measure the dirty electricity. You can get filters in your bedroom. Um, you can do different shielding techniques from um, graphite paint, uh, window films, to even what's called a sleep sanctuary to help mitigate the EMF. I caution you to always, um, you know, work with an expert because some of these technologies need to be grounded, and you know, you just don't want to do this willy nilly. You want to know what you're dealing with, and yeah. you know, you want to me measure before and after so you know that what you're doing is working. So. Um, but if, if you, you know, Beverly made a point, and I'm going back to Dr. Rubik, you know, one of the things that you can do, even if you don't, can't spend all that money on um, all that mitigation, most of us have a smartphone and just start using your smartphone phone in a very safe and mindful way. Don't put it on your body. Absolutely. Don't, don't put it near your head. Keep it distance as your friend with yes. these technologies. So, you know, keeping them away from your body is, you know, something that you can do today. And so, um, you know, that's something that people are talking about. And then, you know, when we think about other energies, so we have EMF, and then there's a lot of conversations around trauma and how trauma, you know, past traumas. We also talk about this kind of ancestral trauma or um, generational trauma, if you want to kind of frame it in that way, but how trauma can actually affect our bio field and can affect mm. our, you know, physical body. And so um, Eileen McCusick, um, she has a system called biofield tuning. So she uses tuning forks and she's kind of mapped out the biofield and finds that there's certain patterns where people have different traumas or different stored emotions. And she actually uses sound and vibration to create more coherence um, where trauma might have affected the biofield. So, you know, of course, talk therapy can be helpful. And I don't just, you know, dissuade people from doing that in some level. But if you're feeling stuck and you know that you have um, maybe, a, um, you know, you maybe have a history that you, um, haven't really acknowledged, um, but traumas and the work that we do at Sophia, we've acknowledged that that can create a susceptibility to chronic illness. And so there's lots of modalities from tuning forks to something called EFT. I have a couple practitioners mm -hmm. who do tapping and tapping can yeah. help. Create we've, more we've, interviewed, uh, we've done yeah. some interviews with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So those are, you know, important to you know, um, think, think about, and then, um, you know, just kind of bridging the gap and starting to think of things that we can do. We have a conversation about water. So we all have to, you know, drink water every day. Right. So I have, um, Dr. Klinghart, um, interviewed Dr. Pollock, Jerry Pollock, who oh, you know, yeah. came up with the Can't wait. Can't fourth wait phase of water. And then we also, um, talked to Dr. Boros who talks about the deuterium levels in water. So we this is like, did, we just did yeah, an interview yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just yeah. did a, a thing with um, the uh, the Nano V, which oh yeah, yeah, we have that at Sophia. Yeah. I use it every day. So when I lay on yeah. my pulse, I'm doing the fourth phase of water. So yeah, nice. I mean, these are huge things. See, this all yeah. came out of my research this last year. You know, uh -huh. realizing how important these things are. You know, mm -hmm. and to your point, and I'll let you go on, but yeah. to your point about. Um, you know, sometimes we turn off our Wi-Fi and we're doing all these great things in the home. Two cases that popped into my mind. Mm -hmm. My friend Ben Greenfield, he did EM, DEMF his whole existence, right? Mm -hmm. Only finds out when the guy comes out, a professional he hires to come out and measure, he's getting this EMF exposure on the one side of his house. It's because there was a, an electrical you know, thing that was you know, creating it, where they're making electricity, was too close to uh -huh. his house. I don't remember how far, maybe five, mm -hmm. within five miles. Didn't know it. He had to paint and you know the whole side and put up shielding windows and all mm -hmm. to stop that from coming in and affecting him and his family. I had a uh, one of my clients, same thing. We couldn't figure out what was going on, and she was like every time she'd be in her house, anxious. She had all the Wi-Fi turned off. As it turned out, her neighborhood had these little Wi-Fi things. Anyways, it was it was hitting her house. They had to move. Yeah. So oh. I, the point is, to your point, you, you know you have to educate yourself about these things. Mm -hmm. I mean, some it's going to do that, obviously. But go ahead. Okay, some great shares already. Yeah, um, yeah. The water, yeah, yeah. And the water conversation. Um, so we talk about exclusion zone water, fourth phase of water. We talk yeah. about deuterium depletion. We also have Dr. Cowan talking about structured water, and um, he's taking Dr. Um, Pollock's concept 
Forbes and talking about how the water inside our cells are actually exclusion zone water and it's actually yeah. this gel-like um, cytoplasm that actually um, affects our cell voltage and our charge. And he talks, he goes down the rabbit hole, but does a really great job of doing that and also talks about structured water um, and how that um, helps our cell communication. And then um, Kelly Halderman talks about hydrogen water. So, you know, um, so, you know, it's the, I was like, no one knows what to do about water, but I maybe made it too complicated that we have to get, of course, the fluoride and the metals out, um, yeah. the, the deuterium out, maybe, you know, add some hydrogen and structure the water. And maybe then we, we have it figured out, but it's, it's a work in progress, but they're, they're both, all of the water experts, um, you know, have a lot to offer to the conversation. And I think this is, this is one of those foundational pieces, right? You know, um, hydration, cell voltage, cell communication, um, you know, depends on um, proper hydration and electrolyte balance and exclusion zone water in our cells. So that was a really fun um, rabbit uh, hole. That it sounds like you've gone down as well. I, well, yeah. When you start going into this, you realize, wow, there is so much here, right? The energy in water, good or bad, that's you know the key to hydration. That our cells have this exclusion zone water, easy water, as we you know kind of reference it, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, just so I then I went, okay, what can I do about this? How do I up this? Because like you said, we're going to more and more EMFs, bad, you know, electromagnetic frequencies mm -hmm. we're being bombarded with. How do I detox from it? And that's the, the discoveries here that you're going to be sharing in the summit, obviously. I mm -hmm. mean, and I've discovered a lot of them too. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, and you think about EMF has this multifactorial effect on our body. And, you know, Dr. Paul is doing great research and talking about the um, yeah. voltage gated calcium channels and how that's affected. And we know that can affect, um, you know, everything from melatonin depletion to um, you know, just affecting cellular communication and DNA transcription. And, um, you know, so we, we know that, but then it's like, how do we continue to continue to combat that stress or also make our bodies less of an antenna, you know, for, um, you know, that stress. And one of the things that probably every speaker talked about also is the impact of grounding and how, um, you know, connecting, you know, bare feet with the earth um, and getting those electrons, you know, from the earth to help to. Yeah, so I mean, let, let, let's, let's focus on that a little bit, because mm -hmm. again, this is a subject that mm -hmm. everyone can do right now. Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, right now I'm experimenting with sleeping with and without grounding. When mm -hmm. my son broke his back, we were grounding his areas of injury mm -hmm. um, as advised by somebody. And um, so talk about grounding. What, like, you mm -hmm. know, what does it even mean? Why does it matter? And why are we not grounded today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, again, grounding is something everyone can do. And, you know, the, the, cheapest way to do that is, you know, take your shoes off and connect with um, the earth. And so what we're getting, you know, from the earth when we make contact um, with the earth is that we're getting actually absorbing um, electrons, um, you know, from the earth and we're absorbing those through our feet and then our body actually is able to have this electron reserve repleted because um, modern day stress depletes our electron reserves and that can create more free radical stress and inflammation in our body. So it's a way to continually combat the chronic stress that modern life, um, you know, impacts us with. And so, um, so grounding you can do with the earth. There are technologies to help support yeah. You uh, nowadays, um, there are grounding pads. Um, you can sleep on them. Um, that can help you to um, also replete and restore at night. Um, my caution with that is when you use a grounding pad, just make sure it's grounded. So, um, <laughs> you know, if you're not, you know, and this has happened where people plug them in and their electrical outlet isn't actually grounded with the earth. You can actually, I think, measure that at Home Depot. There's a um, tool that you can just plug into your plug and make sure that it, ha it has a ground. Um, Dr. Klinghart would take it a step further and say, you know, only use a grounding pad if you can actually ground it in the earth, you know, out the window. Um, but, you know, you should feel better from that. So if you're feeling, um, you know, jittery or, you know, not well with ground um, with a grounding pad, it's either not grounded or it's too stimulating or too much at that time. Yeah, I know. I mean, so sleeping, right? You know, I mean, are you grounded? Well, you could talk about that because what's your bed made of, what's your house, you know, I mean, there's a lot of factors here. So people, I think, need to understand, you know, can they be grounded in their house? What about sleep, which is where probably it's the most important to be grounded? What can they do? So one thing that, you know, we have a little grounding wire that you can either put in the ground. You know how you have three plugs? The mm -hmm. bottom little round one is the ground, but it's simple device, as you pointed out, you know, make sure it is in fact grounded. Uh, then you could plug it into that, or you could run a longer wire 
and literally put a metal rod in the ground outside and run mm -hmm. it to your bedroom. So I'm experimenting with putting these little grounding effects on me. But anyway, so talk about that. When are you grounded? Are you grounded in your house? Are you not? What about sleep? Mm -hmm. Well, sleep, you know, to your point, just, you know, touching on sleep, um, we're always talking about sleep because of how our lymphatic system, you know, our brains detoxify at bedtime, right? Yeah. So, you know, so our brains actually shrink 60% uh, of size to make room for the flow of lymph uh, through the brain. And that's a, way, a big way um, that we get toxicity out of our brain. And so when we're thinking about brain health and neurological disease, sleep is critical. And so, you know, when we think about sleep, it's an EMF protected environment. We also, some people sleep inclined. I don't know if you do that yet, Dr. Pompa, but the mm -hmm. actually at a five degree incline at night. Um, and that can help um, lymph drainage out of your brain and can be supportive in that way oh. um, and yeah and then you know you can take it up a notch right so your mattress materials obviously are going to be important um, not to divert us but I know some patients you know mattresses can get moldy over the years so, oh, yeah. so, you know so that can be if you're having bad sleep and you're doing everything just your your mattress could be affecting you you talked about metal springs versus you know wood box um, box springs or no box spring um, but the metal springs can disrupt you know our sleep and can affect um, our body's ability to ground and um, detox at bedtime um and then um you know other things around so, can, can, we, yeah. can we offset that real fast i'm yeah. sorry can we, can we offset that by sleeping on a grounding mat or these things i have that you just uh -huh. stick on yourself and ground to the ground can we offset the metal bed or the metal springs because people are going Okay, hold on. Wait, I'm yeah. not going out right now and buying a new bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, absolutely. I think that we can, and I think it's, again, individual. And I, I don't know about the grounding pads yet, so I'm excited to learn, you know, about those from you. But um, absolutely, I mean, you know, I know both of our jobs is to educate people, and we overwhelm people very easily, I'm sure, <laughs> you know. So that's, you know, I, when I see a new patient, I'm like, I'm going to really overwhelm you, you know, but this is a new language, and how can we – create small changes over time. And, you know, it's like what the goal is, is how do we decrease these cumulative stressors, right? So cumulative means that they, it's not going to like, you know, one night just, you know, break right. you, but it's this constant daily stress, right? So yeah. how, how can we reduce that impact on in our health and in our, in, our, in our health and in our lives and that's where we see, you know, change, you know, happen. And so I just, I, to your point, I, I think that there are, you know, little things that we can do over time. And I, I don't personally sleep with a grounding um, pad, but I do have um, some patients who really, um, you know, enjoy that. I mean, I'm not promoting a brand, but Samina um, is uh, somebody who we work closely with and they have actually a grounding pad, I think from Austria, that a lot of my patients consistently say that the, their sleep is more restorative. Uh. Some of my, you know, some of my patients um, don't sleep on grounding pads, but they actually do sleep on biomats or those infrared or amethyst mats. So, you know, what these different tools and technologies are doing are not only grounding the body, but also improving circulation, blood flow, and just allowing the body to get into parasympathetic so you can have really restorative sleep. And that's where... Yeah, you know, yeah. and I love measuring everything and yeah. I have devices to do that. You know, I, I actually, uh, she's listening, but I, I'm going to, I don't even know the name of it. I'm experimenting with a very inexpensive way to ground and mm -hmm. just put these on your body mm -hmm. at, you know, at night and you don't even have to buy a grounding pad. So oh. yeah, I mean, anyways, I'll, I'll add the link. And again, I'm like, you know, I'm not even promoting it uh, because mm -hmm. I, I'm still partway through my experiment, but mm -hmm. you know, they've, they've experimented with it and, you know, have before and after studies on REM sleep, deep sleep. And to your point, I, I love what you just taught me, the 5% little head raise because mm -hmm. I can actually do that, you know, with the, the bed I have. And, you know, mm -hmm. the lymphatic, we just learned recently mm -hmm. um, science that the brain even has lymph channels. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, right. it's, it's like, like 2015, I think, that we discovered yeah, that. Yeah, right? 2015. Yeah. That's like, that's just yeah. learned, right? Yeah. I mean, but anyways, but yeah, so the amount of REM sleep, I think that's when most of that happens. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. So I, I look at the amount of REM versus, mm -hmm. that's kind of what I'm looking at here, you know, with some mm -hmm. of this grounding. But anyways, mm -hmm. yeah, so there's some great tips, folks. You know, maybe raise yourself up, help that lymphatic drainage, mm -hmm. try some type of grounding, and I'll put the link of what I'm, you know, not promoting it because I, I'm actually studying it now, um, but Google grounding pads, right? So talk about your home. I mean, when we're walking around our home, 
What about mm-hmm. with shoes, without, and in our home without shoes? I mean, you know, mm-hmm. when are we grounded? When aren't we? We talked about the bed. So what about just everything? Mm-hmm. You know, I, um, I, I didn't, that didn't really come up in conversation as much. I mean, what I would, um, you know, think about, you know, with um, grounding in your home. I mean, of course, the materials, you know, that are in your home, what kind of flooring do you have? Um, you know, Dr. Klinghart has studied a lot with building biology and how we kind of set up Sophia. We, we have a lot of cork flooring, you know, which is um, yeah. going to be a little bit more supportive, um, you know, for people. And so we actually have people take off their shoes when they come into Sophia. Um, and so we, you know, so practice again, that. A, a yeah. rubber bottomed yeah. sole is yeah. not grounding. You just, yeah. I'm just trying to be yeah. clear why you people take their shoes yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, um, but, and then, you know, to that, that point too, when you're thinking about your home, I mean, I when I think about grounding, I also think about, and you mentioned this also, um, dirty electricity. I think that gets overlooked often, you know, in the EMF conversation, but that has to do with the wiring of your home and that can, you know, create these um, disharmonic, you know, fields that come out of the wall and the wiring. And so you can measure that and you can put filters in, in your rooms to offset that. The yeah, steps I, are I know we have them here. I don't yeah. know if you can the one in the shot, but yeah, we, we use them here as well. And so, you know, there's so much, you know, that you can do. I mean, the, the long and the short of it, you know, with our home environments, I mean, I think um, that for whatever reason in our country, you know, there's a lot of um, building materials that are not the healthiest, right, for our bodies. And so I think that there, we have a long way to go, you know, to create healthier homes, healthier environments where not only we have the electromagnetic fields um, and the ability to ground in our home, but also healthy materials that are not full of VOCs or ones that are prone to growing mold or, you know, so forth. Um, But I I think there's a lot, um, you know, I'd like to see the direction, you know, as we think about health, like how do we really create healthy buildings and healthy homes? Yeah, I mean, um, most homes, if you take your shoes off, you'd be grounded, you know, wood floors, (laughs) you know, and there's some things that probably do it more. Mm-hmm. Um, an example outside regular cement I've heard you tell me if I'm wrong is it will you'll ground through it but asphalt you don't mm-hmm. well I guess one is synthetic that, that's why and one is mm-hmm. made from sand and <laughs> you mm-hmm. know natural things so I mean I, I guess as a general um, thing if it's man-made it's probably not very good at grounding if at all it, mm-hmm. if it's natural it's grounding but then steel would be an example that it's you know well it's man maybe yet it's natural components but yet it's not yep. grounding so is there any other help that uh, we can give our viewers you know um not a the top of my head but I feel like um you know just also in nature right you know not only you know are we thinking about the sand and the grass but you know definitely different types of um rock and stone and you know some people you know have that type of flooring, you know, in their, their home that could be more helpful, but not, you know, I, not that I know of other than that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move away from grounding. What are some of the other gems uh, that um, you learned that people can do right now? Yeah. Help their body electric. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we talked about a lot of different also modalities. So if you're um, struggling with a chronic illness and you feel like you're maybe not seeing the result, if you're just taking supplements all day and, you know, really feeling like you need more support, you know, we talked about something called frequency specific microcurrent. Um, so that Dr. Carolyn McMakin, um, she uses, um, frequency specific microcurrent and that's adding healthy resonant frequencies to the body to restore communication. And so um, we use that at Sophia and we've seen some wonderful things with that. Um, You know, other tools and technologies, um, color, right? So everyone can get in touch with color. So color is, um, you know, different colors are different wavelengths of light. And Dr. Deanna Minnick talks about even incorporating different um, colored foods and how that can affect our physical body and our energetic body. Um, we use also something called photodynamic therapy at Sophia. We're using something called the Weber medical laser and we can use laser or different colors of light to affect different, um, biological systems. So we use intravenous light. Yeah. Yeah. And this can also be used in acupuncture meridians as well, but there's red light, blue light, yellow light, um, there's UV light, infrared light, um, green light, and each light has a different. I've, I've used that. I use that yeah. device at uh, um, Hope for Cancer. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. D- Doctor, I know exactly um, mm-hmm. what you're talking about. It works amazing. Obviously, they're using it for cancer. It's in yeah. Hope for Cancer. 
but for Lyme disease, et cetera. And folks, just you know, understand what you're saying. We get the benefit of different lights. Um, you know, I use my red light therapy, but this is actually going IV with a, it's a laser, it's a light. And mm -hmm. it goes through like maybe 20 minutes each, like green, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. yellow, then blue, then, you know, you, and anyways, and it's transformative for people. And it's mm -hmm. basically affecting the mitochondria, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the cells directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, each uh, light has different properties, but we're affecting absolutely the mitochondria, everything from that to actually um, helping to allow our red blood cells to carry more oxygen. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're also having anti-infective or anti-pathogen effects of, you know, things like blue light can, you know, be antibacterial. Um, yellow light is wonderful. It's antiviral. It also could increase serotonin production in the body and vitamin D production in the body. So um, we're, we just got um, our Weber um, beginning of the year and we've just seen some wonderful things and people feel really good from it. And so, you know, we, you know, if you're not, you don't have access to that device, um, they actually have a home unit. I don't know if you've um, experimented mm. with this. It's the laser uh, watch, the Weber medical laser watch. And I, I, I have one myself and I try to wear it 30 minutes a day, but it has all the different colors that um, the light goes on the, the wrist. So there's acupuncture meridians on the wrist but it's also an area of high blood flow so, you know, so someone told me the, about uh, the watch um ha have you noticed good results how, and how much are they you know I, I i feel good there's um two versions there's one spectra which has all of the lights and then there's one that's less expensive that's just red or green so i think the spectra was about 1500 and mm -hmm. then the um red and green alone i think it's around 600 don't quote me but they're that kind of price difference but you can you know the cool thing with the specter too it has a pad it has a nasal um so you can do intranasal light therapy it has um ear um, buds too so you can get you know light in different areas dr weber is quite brilliant and you know i'm still really learning a lot about photodynamic therapy but it's all about not only the wavelength of light but the depth of penetration and where the light can access mm -hmm you know, in the body. And so, um, so it's great. You know, um, I, I'm really enjoying mine. I, I feel, you know, I, I, I feel really good on a regular basis, but I feel like it just, um, I use it at night before I go to bed and I, I feel. Yeah, like and it's cool. a way to increase yeah. deep sleep and, you know, and again, mm -hmm. it's, it's actually testable, but so mm -hmm. let me ask you a question. Why, why do you think that these light therapies are having such a big impact on people today? Because they do, you know, mm -hmm. when people add red light therapy and different therapies, you know, it really does make a difference. Why do you think that is? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, part of the conversation we're having in the Body Electric and what Dr. Klinghart really taught me and what he talks about at the Body Electric Summit is about um, the biophoton um, theory and how we all, um, there's um, Dr. Pop, um, he's a German um, uh, researcher, and he came up with this biophoton uh, theory, this understanding that all um, living organisms and, you know, us being one of them, that we emit these low emissions of light. And so um, he was able to look at, um, you know, people who had cancer and how their light was very low in their body. And then people who had MS had too much light. And so we were, we were supposed to have this coherent um, light that is emitted from, you know, our cells. And this is also a huge way that our body communicates and this is the conversation what we're trying to really pique everyone's curiosity and is that you know we're not just these um you know organisms with just these chemical signaling that happens all day long but we also our bodies communicate with light and you know um lynn mctaggart is actually on the summit and she has a book called the power of eight which is all about intention and you know basically kind of prayer and you know seeing um people's um, profound healing with that but she wrote a book before that called the field and it, um you know i'm rereading it right now and she goes into the science you know about this um you know not only the field of energy we're all interconnected with but she talks a lot about the research that i wish was more present and more commonly discussed about how um the human body really communicates with light and so each of these colors and each of the with the intravenous laser um they're talking to different um it turn you know it's like the lights are actually turning on different enzymes and different biochemical processes in the body and so i also think about it you know we already had this talk here i think it um it increases our exclusion zone water um and so that helps you know i think health is a relationship to how much exclusion zone water we have in our bodies and so it's helping us to maintain 
cell voltage and cell charge, and then also exclusion zone water is exclusion. So it, and where exclusion zone water is, we can't have as many tox environmental toxins um, in that area. So it kind of excludes those and moves those out of the body. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm still learning and I have a lot yeah, to me learn, too. Yeah, you know, me um, too. but yeah, but I, I feel like, um, you know, I've only been practicing medicine for nine years and I, you know, I helped do so for a long time. And, you know, the summit really piqued my curiosity with a lot of tools and therapies, this being one of the primary ones to um, explore more with my patients. Have you used the, um, the Nano V? Um, I did a show on it here. Do um, mm -hmm. you use it in your, your clinic there? Yeah. We do. Yeah. We often pair that with um, IV therapy if people are hanging out in my IV room. Yeah, I pair it with different things as well, yeah. but I, I use yeah. it. I can't say I use it every day, but um, almost. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great tool, you know, and then just, yeah, another tool that's, you know, you're not taking a pill, you know, but it's it's um, supporting your body and um, decreasing free radical stress and, you know, also improving the exclusion zone water in the cells. Yeah, and, and the exclusion zone water, folks, if you haven't watched that episode, Ashley, put that in here because people will be like, what are they talking about? Yeah. They know back and what, um, <laughs> specifically about that. But, um, you know, this is where we fold proteins. I mean, this is the mm -hmm. water in the cells that, you know, proteins is who you are. It's life. It's how you make hormones, how you make every tissue cell in the body. Mm -hmm. And if you're lacking this, then it's going to affect like every aspect of your cellular mm -hmm. health and function in your body. So, Paul, uh, you know, Paul, like I, I would, I really should interview him about it, but learning more about it as well. And, and to your point, mm -hmm. I, I think that being around all of the false lights that we are mm -hmm. around today, everything's going LED, mm -hmm. everything's going. I mean, the old incandescent light, which was the closest mm -hmm. to full, regular full spectrum mm -hmm. that we could get. I mean, can you even buy those? I, you can in Home Depot. I find, you know, it's harder. It, yeah. it's, it's harder and they're more expensive. Right. You know, it's like, so anyways, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. So we're surrounded by these lights that are very limited on their spectrum. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the big reasons why this light, uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. therapy has really become a game changer for people. Mm -hmm. I really do. No, I, I agree. And um, Dave Asprey's on the summit and he's, you know, um, he talks a lot about junk lighting and, you know, how, um, you know, you can use different, you know, glasses to affect the eyes. So the eyes are getting the right signal of light at the right time of day and everything and it can really affect not only you know all of this um junk lighting can affect not only our um electromagnetic field um, but also our circadian rhythm right and so that's been um that's a huge part of our health and when we mm -hmm. get ill that gets often dysregulated so i think the yeah. light has a lot to do with that of course as well yeah i mean um you know dave talks a lot about obviously that i mean you see him with his blue blocker glasses on all i think he had him on in the interview yeah 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 you know it, and it's funny because um i'm still in that like trying phase you know and i kind of screwed up my own experiment because i was wearing the glasses and looking at my deep sleep which you know they say it absolutely affects um and i want to know how much is it a big deal is it a little deal mm -hmm. but then i started doing pemf i started doing, I, I started doing all these things so it's like okay yeah. My deep okay. sleep is about on average two hours a night, which um, for someone 54 my age, uh, you know, seems like it's pretty darn good because yeah. uh, I ask around. I ask a lot of questions. Um, but anyways, the point is, is now I have to kind of go back and say, okay, now let me do it without the glasses because I got my deep sleep up because I was doing so many things. So anyways, fun things that I do to experiment with this stuff. But to your point, though, I'm learning too. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to know. I know the light stuff, like I said, even before bed, it is real, but to what degree? I want to know. I want to mm -hmm. know what, how much grounding while I'm mm -hmm. sleeping is affecting me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. stay tuned. Okay. Some other ones. I mean, maybe uh, some other interviews that, that really just stuck mm -hmm. out in, mm -hmm. uh, in your mm -hmm. mind with the summit. Yeah. You know, I... I had a lot of fun also um, interviewing um, Dr. Garcia. He um, he teaches biomagnetism, so he uses paired magnets on the body to help um, affect. He talks about cellular communication and affect mm -hmm. pH levels. So it's just this whole other way um, to affect the physical body with magnets. And so he sees a very similar patient population um, that. That we, that we both do and so I had a lot of fun you know talking to him we um we also had Donna Eden who you know she's one of the um you know she has the one of the first books that I can recall on energy medicine and she um she's just full of a lot of love and light and she gives people a lot of home tools and exercises to work with these energy systems in the body 
and she she actually had MS when she was in her 20s and so I you know I think she's in her 70s now and you know, I mean you should see her and her partner in the in the um, in the interview there they both look very vibrant and you know mm-hmm. healthy and so um, that was um, also a lot of fun um, and then you know I you know Dr. Klinger actually he talks about his um, autonomic response testing, the form of uh, applied kinesiology or muscle testing that we do in the office. And he goes into that a little bit more. So he doesn't really talk about that on a lot of interviews. So that was really fun for him to break that down and just, you know, bring, um, bring that to light for people who are wondering, you know, how and why that works. So I, I really enjoyed, you know, that talk as well. Um, Dr. Mercola, you know, is on the summit. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. He's just, um, he's a lot of fun and he's, you know, similar to you always trying to experiment on himself and figuring out what's going on. So he has a lot to offer about what he's excited about, you know, right now. So, um, you know, I'm sure I could continue to pick my brain. I was, I was just one of those, um, you know, one other, you know, person to mention, um, Jim or James Oshman, who has the energy medicine textbook. So just kind of circling back and, um, bringing this into this kind of really rooted, grounded, Uh, field is that um, he has this beautiful energy medicine book and he, you know, if you want to get a refresher on physics, you know, he talks about, you know, how these things work and why they work and then applies them to, you know, human biology. And he, I I love his concept and um, his ideas around the living matrix. And so this is this idea that the intracellular environment is completely interconnected to the extracellular environment and to, um, you know, to our fascia and, you know, our lymphatic system and how um, our body... Oh, um, name of the book. What's um, the name? Of it? It's called Energy Medicine um, by Jim or James Oshman, um, and he termed the coin Living Matrix. And he talks about this is the area where energy medicine actually works, and that um, you know the Living Matrix or this interconnection of like our whole uh, connective tissue to our intracellular environment that it um, not only communicates with biochemistry and um, and you know hormones and all of these things but it also communicates mm. with light and vibration and sound and that's where you know that's where energy medicine is working and so he, he has some really um, beautiful ideas now, remember, that was one of my questions is give mm-hmm. us a book uh, for our listeners and viewers because this is so new to all of us mm-hmm. I guess you did that energy me- uh, medicine by James Osher can the average person read or understand it you know no, it's it's a you know you absolutely everyone can read it and maybe not everyone will be as drawn to it because it is you know it's a little bit more you know science. You know, I mean, even yeah. there's probably parts you, you just, yeah. you read it's, over yeah, the science. It's a menu. Yeah, yeah, it's a menu that you can. If you also want to read more of the science, I would um, encourage you to read uh, Lynn McTaggart's book, The Field. I think that's a really the excellent book the field. Uh, okay. yeah. and then Donna Eden you know she has her book energy medicine energy medicine as well and she talks about if you want just that conceptual um, you know book of like all the energy systems in the body um, Ari Witten is on the summit and he talks a lot about red and infrared light and goes down deep into the science of why red and light um, red and infrared light work um, and then um, you know most a lot of the um, a lot of the speakers actually have books. I mean, Jerry, of course, has the fourth face of water mm-hmm. book. Um, uh, Dr. Cowan has a number of books, and he's just coming out with a book, um, Cancer and the New Biology of Water. So he's talking about water and his ideas there. So, um, so yeah, there's a lot. Uh, you know, my 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 goal and my desire was just to give you a broad, you know, um, overview of a lot of different topics and see what resonates with you. Right. right? You know. So how how can they can they order the summit now? Because I know everyone wants this is going to want to order the summit. Can they do it right now? Yeah, you should have a link. Um, you know, in the uh, yeah, so they um they can go there, but it's the Body Electric Summit, and yeah, it, it was just we'll a put a back. link in, folks. We'll mm-hmm. add a link. Ashley will do that. You just click on it and. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll, you'll be able to order like, okay, last question for you. <laughs> Klinghart, he's a mad scientist. Maybe I am too. What's it like working with Klinghart? I have to ask. <laughs> it's a loaded question right now. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, I, you know, it's, you know, it's of course normal to me, but I, um, no, he's brilliant. He's a brilliant mind. He's a thought leader. I mean, he was really talking about EMF um, in the early 2000s. He was ahead of the curve and, you know, it's interesting to see his ideas. You know, he has really pioneering ideas and then, 
you know, over time, you know, we, we learn to understand and explain them more and more, you know, with, okay, how's this working? The research is showing this. And so, yeah, I, I like to see, I, I kind of, you know, when I see his mind working, I know that he's opened up to, you know, this whole other, you know, um, ability to receive information. And, you know, the thing that I um, really respect about him is, you know, he's going to be 69 and he sees, I mean, he's seeing patients right now, you know, in the other room, like, oh, and he works from like the moment he gets up he was at a conference he works all day he'll stay and see patients till seven o'clock or or eight o'clock at night he's teaching seminars he and he's he's in his passion and i i really um admire that and i try to emulate that and you know just educating myself educating our community and you know really trying to figure out how we can make our um, protocols you know more and more effective for people yeah that's awesome well we appreciate all that you do and um you know just uh your art connection uh, there with Klinghart and the, the mad scientist that he is. We appreciate him though. So uh, thank you for all, all that you brought today. What a great, I, I, I know so many people watching this are going to jump on that summit. That's for sure. I sure am. You know, I, I, I can't wait for, I jot it down. Matter of fact, so many names. <laughs> I got to watch that one. Just, oh, now that's what I was doing. So uh, yeah, this is a, uh, this is a new uh, world we li we're living in. And mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe this wouldn't have been as important uh you know, 50, 100 years ago, uh, maybe not even 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, but oh my gosh, is it important now? And I'm, I'm really excited. So thank you for bringing the message here and for, with the summit, Dr. Christine, appreciate you. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me and your participation. And I'm really excited to get this information out there. So yeah, thank you. Right. Thank you. Well, that's it for this week. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. This episode was brought to you by Cyto Detox. Please check it out at buycytonow.com. We'll be back next week and every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. We truly appreciate your support. You can always find us at cellularhealing.tv. And please remember to spread the love by liking, subscribing, giving an iTunes review, and sharing the show with anyone you think may benefit from the information heard here. And as always, thanks for listening.